Are you ready to prepare the greatest defense for your people against the Dark Dragon Goliath? Guardian's Call by Skybound and Druid City Games. That's what you'll be doing there. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching the Dice Odyssey today. I'm Kaz, and today we're going to be talking about Guardian's Call by Druid City and Skybound Games. This is a bluffing and deduction game where you're trying to gather uh, the most shields and different kinds of resources, weapons and spells and things of that nature. Now one of my favorite games of all time is Sheriff of Nottingham. In that game, I absolutely love being able to bluff out the sheriff, sneak illegal goods past him, and get my rebellion started in Nottingham. And I feel cool when I'm actually the sheriff and I can catch somebody doing the same to me. Or sometimes they get past me, but you get the point. It's a fun game and it's fun to try to out bluff each other and things of that nature. So when I heard a Guardian's Call, I was automatically intrigued because I heard it had some of the very similar elements I was used to in that game. Now what I'm gonna do is give you just kind of a brief overview of how the game plays, give you the spirit of it, and then I'm gonna get back with my final thoughts. In Guardian's Call, you're gonna take on the persona of one of different types of Guardians. You could take Marcus the Archer, Zira the Priestess, Wilfrey the Paladin, Gorbach, sounds Klingon, the Barbarian, and Raven the Mage. Each one of them is going to have their own affinity for special types of cards that come up. For example, Gorbach will have an affinity for weapons and gain one coin for each weapon you receive in an offer. Now your main goal is to build a tableau of different kinds of sets of cards which will aid you in your quest as well as helping you get the highest score to win the game. Now different cards will do different things. For example, shields will get you in-game points and the more that you get, the higher your point total goes. Artifacts. You can exchange three of these to draw two treasures and keep one. Villagers. It will allow you to move up on the castle track and they will help you score at council and war. Spell. You can assign as any other guardian card type immediately or when you receive any offer. Weapons. Person with the most weapons at the end of the game will get 20 points. The person who gets the second most will get 10 points. Curse cards. If you can successfully get them into another player's hand, it will hurt them. If they accept one, they'll have to sacrifice a card. Two, you can kill one of their tableau cards. Or three and over, you can steal one of their tableau cards. There are also some other different types of cards, such as the quest cards. The quest cards will score at different times in the game. There are prerequisites to actually gain this card. For example, you could have Wicked Ways, successfully offer five curse cards, Collector of Relics, have more artifacts in your tableau than both of your neighbors, or Glory of War, have no villagers in your tableau. And as you can see at the bottom here, they'll give you this amount of points, and they also score at different times, such as when the War or Council cards come up. Let's talk briefly about the War and Council cards. During setup, you'll have broken the Guardian's deck down into several different decks, and then you'll shuffle the Council and War decks in there. The Council card will come up before the War card does. Once the Council card comes up, the first and second player on the Castle track score 10 and 5 points respectively. When the War card comes up, this triggers the end of the game. You finish the current round, and then you proceed to your final scoring. You also have the Treasure Deck cards, which you can trade those artifact cards for. Let's take a look at a few of them here you could have the Helm of Safety. It earns you three points, and it allows you to name a Guardian card type, reveal the top five cards, and add any that match that type to your tableau. Or the Golden Chest, 10 points. Player with the fewest cards in their tableau, other than you, gains two coins. You also have the Sigil of the Guardians, 11 points. The player with the fewest cards in their tableau, other than you, adds one card from the center to their tableau. The victory points are for in-game scoring. Now, when it comes to the castle track, there are three locations that have a stack of points on them. Whoever gets there first will get the top token of those points, and then the second person will get the next one, and then so on and so forth until it has been depleted. On your turn, you have a multitude of actions you can take. During the preparation step, you can do any or all of the actions in any order. You can draw cards from the Guardian deck or mark it into your hand up to the hand size of six. You can buy a card from the Guardian deck or mark it directly to your tableau, not to your hand, 
for three coins. You could remove a curse card from the market for five coins and you gain five victory points. On your turn, you must make an offer to a player. Now in this game, we have a three player game set up and Gorbach has two different people he could actually trade with. He would choose from the two tokens represented and the person he's getting ready to make an offer to, he can now go ahead and flip that token over showing that he has now made an offer to this person. The offer must consist of only one type of card. A player must never declare they're offering curses. They have to always be bluffed. A player may also bluff about the type of cards in an offer, but not about the number. So in this case, Gorbach will offer Wilfrey two weapons cards, but he's going to say that they are shields. Now he's showing them face down. Wilfrey now has a choice. He can either say, I don't believe those are actually shield cards, or he can say, I do believe they're shield cards. So in this case, Wilfrey says, I do not believe those are shield cards. Gorbach's bluff has failed, and Wilfrey has now gained two weapons cards for his tableau. The good thing, though, is that Gorbach does gain one coin for his troubles, even though he failed. But let's say that the bluff succeeded and Wilfrey believed these were shield cards. Well, now Gorbach gets those into his tableau, and because of his affinity, he gains a coin for each weapon that he receives. And Wilfrey gains one coin into his tableau. Now let's say it's now Gorbach's turn again. The only person he can now make an offer to is Raven because her icon is still showing. And at the beginning of their next turn or the next round, they can flip those tokens back over and the offer pool is opened up again. And in general, play will continue round after round after round until the council card comes up and then the war card, which signals the end of the game. And whoever has the most points at the end of the game wins. Now let's get back to my final thoughts. Let me start off by saying I'm going to have some pros and some cons, but I really, really enjoyed this game overall. The pros. If you like a game like Sheriff of Nottingham or anything that has that kind of bluffing and deduction in it, you're more than likely gonna be tailored to like this game. You just will, because it has a lot of those same kind of, uh, the, the feeling of the elements that are in there. You know what I mean? This trying to you know, get one over on somebody and sneak things past them and say, hey, I, I bet you can't guess that I'm about to you know, screw you over or what have you. You've got a lot of those kind of elements in the game and there's gonna be a rip roaring hilarious time if you get the right crowd together, right? <laughs> you gotta have people that, are, that, that like that type of game. Uh, otherwise, it's possible it could fall flat. I've had that happen in Sheriff before. Um, it, this didn't fall flat yet, but I'm just saying it is a possibility depending on who you're playing with. You have to understand your crowd. Pro number two, the production quality in this game is absolutely top notch. I, I When I did the unboxing, I was just marveling over even the fact that I hadn't even punched out the punch board yet, the tokens and things of that nature. And it felt like they had an extra film on them that I had to rip off. I don't know, it's that tactile feeling of quality. You just know it when you feel it and when you see it. The artwork was absolutely gorgeous. Now the miniatures were, they were decent. They weren't the best quality that I've ever seen, but they were decent. Another aspect I liked was everybody was a little bit different. I do kind of wish that the differences were a bit more pronounced maybe they'll do that in an expansion you know i don't know in this type of game which is a very simple game to get into very simple game you can teach this in five minutes um i, I think you probably have to keep it fairly uh fairly light and simple you don't want to add a lot of extra rules even to a character so you know that's a forgivable thing i mean it, it, i guess i just love asymmetric you know, player powers and games in general. But this worked really well. But that also ties into another pro I really liked was the fact that if I have, like I have my friend over here who's got who's got an affinity for weapons, right? And I'm looking at my own affinity and I have shields. Well, I love the bluffing aspect in the sense that you can use their own affinities against them or at least you can attempt to, right? <laughs> Depends on how good you are playing poker. But you're sitting there and, and I'll be like, okay, I'm gonna offer you uh, three weapons. But really, they're shields, you know, because you have to keep them all the same. Really, they're shields, and I want to get them so I can gain the coins off of my affinity. But it's enticing to them because, uh-oh, this guy's, you know, giving me weapons. I've got an affinity for weapons. I can gain coins for it. I can use coins to buy things later. Should I take it? Should I not? Oh, you know, you're thinking like that the whole time. I also like the, the curses aspect. I like the fact that they were kind of like a, a tiebreaker at the end as well. Uh, I We had several plays of this game where 
uh, people were sitting there and cursing each other. And sometimes you saw it coming from a mile away. You knew somebody was drawing from that middle market and you knew they were gonna use them at some point. And sometimes they just surprised you and never used them, you know? And so the curses thing was hilarious. Now, if I was gonna say that there were any types of cons in this game whatsoever, um, it, it would be very, it would be stretching it a little bit to find any at all really but I would say it's more subjective cons uh, one subjective con would be more towards your game group the gearing I was talking about this before I had one person in our game group say they did not like this game at all now that did they have a good time playing it yes but it was only because they were with the players they were with their this person was with their friends which was us and we had a hilarious time but they typically don't go for these bluffing style deduction style games in that sense with with the sheriff of nottingham they would they, you know they would not like that game right that's another game that would just not be in their wheelhouse and because this had a lot of similarities to it uh this is something that they you know they're just they just did not like and it's not i mean not every game is for every person right so Again, this goes back to your play group. If you have people in your play group who are okay with this type of game, with the screwing each other over, bluffing each other out, that pokerish uh, deduction and bluffing and things of that nature, uh, and, and, and some take that, then they'll be okay with that. But if you have somebody who doesn't, then they may not like it. So just keep that in mind. Again, that goes toward the players, not necessarily the game's fault, right? Now, another subjective it's not really a heavy con for me or anything like that. Um, and it's more my preferences and play style for this type of game. I tend to prefer a game like this at a higher player count than two or three. I just do. The three count was fine. We played it at that. We never, we actually didn't play this at two. And personally, I don't think I'd want to play it at two. You might have some fun with it. This is not the type of game for me to play it to. Just, just personally. I like to, this to me is more like a small group game. Three's fun and it worked fine and we had a good time with it, but I really feel this game shines at four or higher. I really do. I personally give this about a 7.5 out of 10. Uh, it's definitely one I would go back to. Again, I like this type of game. I will naturally want to be drawn to it, you know what I mean? And especially when we're laughing and having a good time and just screwing each other over. It's that type of game you pull out. It almost has the, the feel of a filler game but it has a little bit more depth than that. So but that's the review. Please like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. Have you played Guardian's Call yet or have you seen anything on it? Are you interested in it? Have you played Sheriff of Nottingham? Is that the type of game that you tend to gravitate towards? Uh, it is for me. So like I said, it's a pretty positive review for me. Anyway, thank you so much. You have a blessed day and game away. This video is brought to you by Fallen Dominion Studios. Check out their website at fallendominionstudios.com.